In this lesson, we will learn about Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages in a loop equals zero. But we can see that in a closed loop, the sum of the voltage drops is equal to what? the total voltage in that loop. So when you say a loop, how do you generate or identify a loop? So for you to be able to generate a loop, you have to find a starting node. Okay, for example, when I take this node A here as a starting node, then I move all the way to node B and then all the way to node G and then move to node H and I go back to node A. Then I'll call this a loop. So Kirchhoff's voltage law is saying that what the sum of all the voltages in this loop should be equal to what? zero. So let's take some examples to help us understand this better. So I have this example here on the screen here. So you are going to generate loops from this circuit that I have here on the screen. Okay, so the first loop that I'll generate here will be loop A B G H A. So I've represented this loop here with this circuit that I have here. So before we continue, let's look at this. Anytime we consider the direction of the current to be in the clockwise direction, we consider the current to be positive. And then when the direction of the current is moving in the anti-clockwise direction, we consider the current to be a negative current. So Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the sum of the voltage drops in the loop should be equal to the total voltage in the loop. So I'll consider the current in this loop here to be moving what in the clockwise direction. Okay, so looking at this circuit here, the, the total voltage or the voltage source in this circuit is what V1 here. So which means that when some of the voltage drops across the resistor R1 and then the resistor R3, it should be equal to this voltage here. V1. So that means what? V1 will be equal to the voltage drop across resistor R1, which will be the product of what current I1 and then the resistance R1. But in this case, looking at the direction of the current, it is moving in a clockwise direction, so that would be what? the positive current. So the voltage drop across the resistor R1 will be what? I1 times R1. Okay, now let's look at the voltage drop across this resistor R3 here also. So looking at its current, the current is also moving in the clockwise direction. So that's also a positive current. So that would plus the product of what current I3 and then the resistance R3. So this is Kirchhoff's voltage law that we have applied here. Let's try this on another loop. So I'll be taking loop A D E H E. Okay, so I'll consider the direction of the current to be in the clockwise direction in this case also. By looking at this loop here, you see that what it has two voltage sources. Okay, which is voltage source V1 and then voltage source V2. So you are going to add these two voltage sources and equate it to the voltage drops in the loop. So adding these two voltage sources, you see that for the current I1, which is coming from this voltage source V1 here is moving in the clockwise direction. So that's what a positive current. And then the current I4 coming from what this voltage source V2 is moving in the anti-clockwise direction, which is what a negative current. So I'm going to consider this voltage V2 here to be what a negative voltage. Okay, since it is since it is producing a current moving what in the anti-clockwise direction. So adding these two voltage sources that was V1 minus what V2. Since V2 is a negative voltage source, this will be equal to the voltage drops in the circuit. So looking at the current flowing across the resistor R1, it is moving in the clockwise direction. So that's a positive current. The voltage drop across the resistor R1 will be I1 times what? R1. Okay. And then the voltage drop across the resistor R2, which has a positive current, will also be what? I2. And short R2. Okay, and then looking at 
the voltage drop across resistor R4 since its current is moving in the anticlockwise direction to have what a negative current at least that volt minus I4 times R4. So that will be the voltage equation for this loop also. Let's try another loop. Okay, so the next loop will be loop BC FGB. Okay, that's the next loop that we we'll learn about. So looking at this loop here, it doesn't have a voltage source. Okay, so you're going to consider the voltage source to be what equal to zero. So that'll be zero. Zero will be equal to the sum of the voltage drop in the loop. So you consider the current to be moving in the clockwise direction. So looking at this current I3 across this actual resistor here it is moving in the anti-clockwise direction so that's what negative current so the voltage drop across this resistor will be negative i3 times resistance r3 and then looking at this current also across the r5 resistor it's also moving in the anti-clockwise direction so that's what a negative current so that was negative i5 multiplying resistance r5 Okay, by looking at this current I2 moving across the R2 resistor, it is moving in the clockwise direction. So that's a positive current so that was plus I2 multiplying R2. So that would be the equation for this loop also. So if applied Kettle's voltage well, to this loop also. So let's take a look at this loop also. So this is loop AC. F H E. Okay, so this loop also has one voltage source, and then we consider the direction of the current to be in the clockwise direction. So in this case, the voltage source, which is V1, we call to the sum of the voltage drops in the loop. So this current here is a positive current since it is moving in the clockwise direction. So the voltage drop across this resistor will be what? The product of what? I1 and then R1. Okay, and then this current is also moving in the clockwise direction, so that's a positive current. So the voltage drop will be plus I2 times R2. Okay, so we now take a look at the last resistor here, which has a current moving in the anti clockwise direction, so that's a negative current. So the voltage drop will be minus I5 multiplying r5 multiplying r5 okay so that will be the voltage equation for this loop also okay so this is how to apply Kettle's voltage law to loops so let's take some example for a better understanding Okay, so I have this example here which says that we should calculate for the current value in all parts of the circuit below. So this is the actual circuit here. Okay, so what I have here is the loops. Okay, so I'm going to name the circuit. Okay, I'm going to name the parts of the circuit. So I'm going to name this part the node A, node B, node C, node D. Root E and then root F. Okay, so what you are going to do is that we are going to apply Kettle's voltage law here. Okay, so for us to do that, we have to take the circuit in loops. Okay, so you have to generate loops for this circuit here. So the first loop I'm going to take will be loop AC DFA. That was loop AC DFA. That's what I have here. So that's loop A, C, D, F, and then back to A again. So this is the first loop. So I'm going to write then the voltage equation for this loop. So looking at this loop, it has what, two voltage sources. And I'll consider the direction of the current to be in the clockwise direction. Okay. So Looking at this current I1 here from this voltage source, it is a current moving in the clockwise direction, so that's a positive current. But the current from this voltage source here 
is moving what in the anti-clockwise direction so that's a negative current so i'm going to consider this voltage source here to be a negative voltage source and then you consider this voltage here to be what, a positive voltage source so we know that the sum of the voltage drops in the circuit should be equal to what the sum of what the voltage sources so the voltage source will now be 32 minus 20 volt since this 20 volt source is a negative volt source that will be what the voltage drop in the loop so the first voltage drop that will be what the voltage across this resistor so that's what 2 ohms times what i1 so that will be 2 i1 and then the second voltage drop which will be the voltage drop across the 4 ohms resistor but the current across this resistor is a negative current so that will be what minus 4 i2 okay so simplifying this we get what 12 equals 2 i1 minus 4 i2 so i'm going to make this my equation one now let's consider another loop the loop i'll consider now will be loop a b e f a so which will be this loop that i have here a b e let me write the e or e f a so this is the second loop that i'll consider here so this loop has a single voltage source so that would be 32 would be put the voltage drops in this loop okay so i'll consider the direction to be in the clockwise direction so this current is moving in the clockwise direction so that's a positive current so the voltage drop across the two ohms resistor about the two ohms times what i1 and then this current is also moving in the clockwise direction so that was plus the 8 ohms times what i3 so this will be my equation 2 okay so we have these two equations here by looking at the circuit here okay we can see that towards i1 is moving towards this node i2 is also moving towards the node and then i3 is moving away from the node and from my previous videos um on catch of current so we learned that all the current moving towards the node is positive and then the current moving away from the node is what's negative so in that case we have what i1 plus i2 minus i3 to be equal to what zero so from here you can see that what i1 plus i2 will be equal to what i3 okay so let's make this our equation three okay so with these three equations what i do here is that since i have i3 here and then i don't have i3 here the two equations will be difficult to solve that's equation one and equation two so i'm going to substitute the value of what i3 here which is what i1 plus i2 into equation two okay so when i substitute this value into equation two it will be easy for us to solve so equation three then will become 32 equals 2 i1 plus 8 i3 but you know that what i3 plus what i1 plus i2 so that was i1 plus i2 the bracket close so moving on this will give me 32 equals 2 i1 a plus 8 i1 plus 8 i2 so this will be 32 equals 2i plus 8i that got 10i1 that's 2i1 plus 8i1 that got 10i1 plus 8i2 so i made this my equation 4 okay so looking at equation 4 and then equation 1 we can solve these two equations simultaneously so let's look at that i right, so i have equation 1 to be 12 equals 2 i1 minus 4 i2 okay this is my equation one okay so what i would like to do is that i would like to eliminate i2 so that i'll be able to solve for i1 here 
Okay, so let's look at how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to fill up some space. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so looking at these two equations here, that's equation four and equation one. I'm going to multiply equation one by two. Okay. So I multiply equation one by two, that what 12 times two, that what 24. This will be equal to two I one times two, that what four I one. And then this will be what minus eight I two. So I make this my equation five. Okay. So now that I have equation five, this will be easy for us to solve. So let's continue. So what I'll do here is that I'm going to add equation four and then equation five. So let's look at that. So equation four plus equation five. Okay, so I have equation four to be 32 equals 10 I1 plus eight I2. Okay, this is equation four. Then I have equation five to be 24 equals 4 i1 minus 8 i2 this is equation 5 so adding these two equations will give me 32 plus 24 that was 56 this will be equal to what 10 i1 plus 4 i1 that was 14 i1 and then 8 minus 8 that was 0 so i can divide both sides by 14 so that i can find my i1 so we'll move side by what 14. So this 14 will cancel out this 14. This one this 14 will go into itself one and then go here four times. So this will give me the value of what I want to be equal to what four amperes. Okay, so now that we know the value of what I want, we can calculate for the value of what I2. So I'm going to calculate for the value of I2 using equation one. You can use any of the equations depending on the one that will be easy for you. So for me, I'll use equation one here. Okay, so on equation one, we know that what 12 equals 2 i1, but we know i1 is 4 ampere, so that about 2 times 4. Okay, minus 4 i2. To simplify this, this is what 12 equals what 8 minus 4 i2. Okay, so let's continue from here. So that would so if it was 8 minus 4 i2. So that would be I'll take this 8 to the left side. So that would 12 minus what 8 is equal to what minus 4 i2. This will give me 4 equals minus 4 i2. Okay. Okay, so let me free up some space here. Okay, so I'm continuing from here. So you have what? 4 equals minus 4 multiplying what? I2. So I divide both sides by minus 4. I divide both sides by what? Minus 4. So this will cancel out. This will cancel out. This 4 will cancel out. So then you get what? I2 will go to what? Negative 1 ampere. Okay, so now that you know I2 to be negative 1 and then I1. To be equal to what, 4 amperes, we can now calculate for what, I3. So earlier on from the equation 3, we learned that what, I3 equals for the sum of what, I1 and then I2. Okay, so now that, sorry, I2, so now that you know the value of what, I1 and then I2, you can find what, I3. Therefore, I3 will equal to what, 4 amperes plus I2, which is what, minus 1. So this will be equal to what? 4 minus 1. And this will give us I3 to be equal to what? 3 amperes. So that will be the value of what? I3. So this is how to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law and then also solve questions using loops. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video.